chase on me, no chase on me, no chase on me, no chase it. One of the most pervasive stereotypes about black Americans is that of the absent black father. The absent black father myth is the idea, the stereotypical and incorrect notion that African American fathers have very little contact with their children, if any contact at all. And in black America, the reality of being fatherless is perhaps most painful. 73% of all black babies are born out of wedlock. Experts say there's a crisis, crisis when it comes to black fathers in this country. The news media loves asking where all the black fathers are, and that whole idea has been linked to everything from poverty and crime to even police violence against black communities. Why are these police shootings occurring? Well, it's because there is an absent black father, or it's because black families are on welfare. But this idea that black fathers aren't present in their kids' lives is actually false. To be a parent is to have children that you love and try and support. And black fathers experience that the same way that anyone else would. Why would you even think there was a difference? What happened to the black family? How did we go from being the most married to being the least? We once had the highest marriage rate. Message. Now we have the lowest. How is that possible? Is it misogynistic lyrics? Is it FNF type of lyrics? Social media? The crack era? Or maybe mass incarceration? Was it Jim Crow segregation? How about the 1965 Great Society issued by Lyndon B. Johnson? Where people like to focus on welfare, AKA receive these benefits and keep the black man out of the house. Even during the Reconstruction period, we were strong. Black people had the strongest family foundation. We had the strongest structure. Message. So what happened? We often examine episodes of terror and oppression in African American history. But what can we learn when we explore slavery, Reconstruction, Jim Crow segregation, and the modern day policies of welfare and mass incarceration for their impact on black love and marriage. Among the systemic impediments to enduring black relationships are three unmistakable culprits, inherited poverty and wealthlessness, the idealization of the patriarchal nuclear family and Eurocentric standards of beauty. These obstacles, in fact, explain the astonishingly low marriage rates among black women from all walks of life in America today. More than 70% of black women are unmarried. And for the millions who prefer to be coupled, especially with black men, their single status is not a reflection of personal failure. Forbidden black love is America's unrecognized civil rights issue. America's founding fathers had the wisdom to envision both material and immaterial benefits of citizenship, but American society was constructed to deny one of the most important facets of these tenets to millions of Black women, the pursuit of happiness through love and marriage. And putting this problem into perspective allows us to see just how entangled Black romantic relationships are with racial politics in America and just how much Black love matters to the health and future of our nation. Message. According to the most recent studies, the CDC confirms Black fathers are 70% more likely to be active in their child's lives. Just me personally, myself, 
I know plenty of brothers who are taking care of business. Literally. Most of the black fathers who I know, they all show up for their kids. Now, I'm not saying that there's no deadbeats. Of course there are. But what I'm saying is, when you talk about these myths and these lies... And in fact, that's exactly what that CDC report found. When compared to white or Hispanic fathers, black fathers were actually more likely to be involved in their children's lives in almost every way. They were even more likely to have bathed, diapered, or dressed their kids, eaten a meal with them, played with them, helped them with homework, and taken them to and from activities. And a lot of that held true even when black fathers didn't live with their children. But if we go solely off of what we see in the news media, Where's your dad? Don't really know. Tell me about that. He's just not around. You wouldn't really see black fathers in that way. Communications professor Travis Dixon studies the prevalence of stereotypes in mass media and the impact of these stereotypes on audiences. He wrote this report, A Dangerous Distortion of Our Families, and in it he found that almost all news and opinion media implicitly or explicitly encourages pretty egregious assumptions about black fathers. Black fathers were shown spending time with their kids only half as often as white fathers, contrary to, well, the actual facts. We found that uh, black mothers, white mothers, white fathers interacted with their kids uh, about 26% of the time in these videos and photos that occurred in the news media. Half as often, we found that happening for black fathers. Only about 14% of the time were black fathers actually interacting with their kids uh, on camera in photos. Dixon also found that news commentary singled out black fathers 60% of the time compared to white fathers only 20% of the time. <laughs> When you constantly repeat stuff, when you constantly put out misinformation, you can make it true. And then people will run with it. So, this whole narrative of how black fathers just don't show up for their kids, as if we're somehow the bottom of the barrel versus all other groups, it's a lie. Another myth. See, black men are supposed to be the head of the family. But if you attack the head, if you get rid of the head, you get rid of the protection, you get rid of the leadership, and you get rid of everything else. So it's a constant attack. On March 1st, 1965, Daniel Patrick Moynihan released the Moynihan Report. This was known as the Negro Family, the case for national action. On New Year's Eve, 1964, Assistant Secretary of Labor Daniel Patrick Moynihan assembled his staff in his office to announce that they were going to help the Negro family. Though Moynihan helped develop Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty in 1964, he thought that much more had to be done to help black Americans, to help them attain anything resembling socioeconomic equality with whites. But uh, the evidence is simply clear. Negro Americans live like any other Americans, and when they're forced into the ghetto and forced into disorganization, they have no more better protection well, than anyone else. I'd like to ask you one specific question, which the New York Times quotes you today as uh, saying. You say that 44% of the children in Harlem are illegitimate. Now, how do you know that? Those are statistics of the New York City Department of Health, sir. Ten, ten health districts in central Harlem, the area with the, which the great American sociologist Kenneth Clark described in his Haru report as having undergone a massive deterioration of the fabric of society and its institutions, and right under our prosperous noses that happened. That hasn't existed for 50 years. That's happened in the last 15 years in this America, and we've been sitting around thinking things have been getting better, and they haven't been getting better for those children. And I think we, I for one, if you think, see what people can face for the civil rights movement, 
in the way of sheriffs, in the way of howling mobs, in the way of the disapproval of their entire society. Well, I think, I, I would hope certainly I'm willing to face the disapproval of a few uh, white liberals from Boston who think I shouldn't raise the subject because it's impolite. Mr. Novak. Mr. Moynihan, in your report you say, quote, equality of opportunity almost ensures inequality of results, unquote. Are you proposing preferential treatment on the hiring of Negroes? I believe this country owes the American Negro his back wages, yes. Should the federal government uh, support preferential treaty treatment for Negroes then? I believe that, I believe what President Johnson said in his Howard University speech, you cannot keep a man in chains for three centuries and take the chains off and, and say suddenly, okay, you're free to run the race of life with anybody else. They have to be made, people have to be given the opportunity to compete with effective resources. And I believe that we should make a special effort. Please follow the History with No Chaser Facebook and Instagram pages.